Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Cubase Secrets. In this video, we're going to talk about a very important technique that will allow you to tighten up multiple takes of the same part inside Cubase. This is a very important skill to have. So let's say you have two guitars, left and right and you want them to be nice and tight in terms of rhythm i'm going to show you how to do this in cubase with full control and i guarantee you this is going to make mixing later on easier let's get started This technique that I'm gonna show you today, you can apply in any type of instrument. You can apply it on guitars, you can apply it on vocals, backing vocals, vocal harmonies, you can apply it to synths. It's all about the technique that I'm going to show you. We've already done a video on how to time correct drums, multi-track drums. So if you're interested in this, make sure you check that video out. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can time correct multiple takes of the same part so that they sit nicely together. And for this example, I'm going to use two guitars. As you can see here, I have two different guitars. Let's play them first and then we're going to start making them a little bit tighter. So as you can see, it's the same part, but played in a slightly different way. They're not too loose, they're actually quite okay, but we can make them tighter if we want to. And this is where this technique comes into play because I could actually use several tools in Cubase to time correct this straight away. I could use Quantize, I could use Quantize Audio Warp, all these things. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to make the creative decision on how this guitar is going to be time corrected. We want to make them a little bit tighter, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can do this so that you have full control. The first thing I have to decide is which part is going to be my master part. So basically the part that the other part is going to follow in terms of timing. So in this case, I'm going to go for this orange part and the green part is going to follow the timing of the orange part. So as you can see, the first thing that you will notice is that these are distorted guitars, which means there are some transients. You can see that Cubase have detected the transients here, but because it's a distorted sound, there are no defined transients. So a transition between two notes is not going to be visible in the waveform. And no matter what algorithm you use, they won't know that they have to find a transient somewhere around here. For example, there are several notes. So this is where this technique is also invaluable. So in order to get started, you have to use a feature that was introduced in the latest versions of Cubase where you can overlay two waveforms on top of each other. And in order to do this, you click on the first one. I'm going to hit Command or Control on Windows and I'm going to select the second audio file. And then I'm going to press Enter on my keyboard. And as you can see, I have the green guitar part here and behind this, we can see the orange guitar. If I want to bring the orange guitar up front, I can just select my take here. And as you can see, now I have my orange guitar right here. So I'm going to take my orange guitar as my reference, and then I'm going to time correct the green one according to this take. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go to my green take here, and I'm going to start time correcting this manually. And I'm going to show you why this is so important in a second. So here's a technique that I use. I go to Audio Warp and I activate Free Warp. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I want to add two hit points manually. First at the beginning, and then I'm going to go to the end of the take. Right here, I'm going to add another warp point here, and maybe I'm going to add another warp point right here. This is so that I can contain this audio into this time frame. This will save you a lot of time down the line, trust me. Now I'm going to start correcting this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a warp point right here and I'm going to correct this first note. As you can see, it wasn't exactly on time. It was a little bit early. So I'm going to just overlay it and there we go. Now, as you can see, I've corrected this note here. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure they finish roughly at the same time. Again, I'm going to drag like this, and now I've time corrected this. I'm going to do the same thing right here. So I'm going to just move this a little bit and just go like that. 
same here. This seems to be correct. So I'm going to immediately add a war point and I'm going to move this one like this. And I can do the same thing right here. Let's go like this. And there we go. So as you can see, I have a guide behind this waveform so I can immediately start time correcting. I don't really need to listen, to be honest with you, because I can see the waveform. There you go. Now, you will notice straight away that right here, one of the guitars have a sustain note where the other one is more of a short note. Now, an algorithm would be confused in this case because it sees two notes here. They're not identical parts. So right here, it doesn't know what to do. But we as humans can have our own artistic direction right here and we can decide how we want to approach this. So let's see what we've done up to this point. <laughs> Okay, let's go here. I'm going to leave these things as they are. And I'm going to go here and start correcting this part. So as you can see, like this. And again, right here, maybe I want to extend this note. You know, I can go like this, extend it, and just bring this back like this. You can add some more hit points right there. And again, you don't have to time correct everything. If you feel that this kind of difference of a few milliseconds contributes to the width of the guitars in the arrangement, you don't have to make them exactly tight. So you can make tasteful decisions like this. If I want, I can correct them, of course. I can go like this and correct them. So for example, right here, I corrected those. Let's see. And undo it. To be honest with you, I kind of like this slight delay of these two notes because I get this width effect on my left and right channels. So maybe I'm going to make this creative decision here and say, I don't want to correct this. An algorithm wouldn't know how to deal with that. It would just make them exactly straight. Let's go to this part here. Maybe this one I can correct a little bit. So I'm going to go to my free warp and just add some points here and let's listen okay so this is again i don't want to touch it but this one i want to correct it a little bit so i'm going to just go like this and now i can tighten it up a little bit maybe also extend this node maybe like that let's have a listen So as you can tell, it's really subtle, but it really makes a big difference when you go ahead and mix this because then the sound is going to be less blurry. You're going to have more defined notes right there. But I wouldn't go over the top. If you were dealing with drums, with multi-mic drums, then they absolutely have to be spot on, especially if you have multiple microphones and you want to retain the face. But right here, it's a different take. It's not the same guitar played through a different amp. That would be a different story. That's a different take. So so I need to make some creative decisions and you can't let any algorithm do this for you. You have to take time and do this yourself using this technique. It's so easy to do anyway. Let me show you another reason why this technique would be the only way to time correct things. For example, right here, as you can see, we have these notes that are connected. You can't really see them here on the waveform, but if I play this, see, it's do 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 do. So it's four notes, but the only note that's separated is this note right here, the last note. So if I play this, this would be incredibly hard to time correct using quantize or an algorithm. So what I can do is I can add these notes on my own. So like this. Make sure that this last note is exactly on the spot and I'm going to change the length as well. And if that was a little bit too fast, you know, I can fine tune this exactly how I want because 
I have ears, I can hear the notes, I can set my audio word points wherever I want. The most important thing is that you use this overlay function on the waveform so that you can see both waveforms and you have a good reference guide for your time correction. The same thing we can apply in vocal harmonies. Here's an example. Ooh, the game fade away. I can select which of these vocal harmonies is going to be my guide. In this case, maybe I'm going to paint this green so that we can see it very easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of them, hit enter. And as you can see, now I see all the vocal harmonies overlaid on top of each other. What I like to do, of course, is I like to go one by one. So I'm going to select my guide and then I'm going to select the first one. And now I can do exactly the same technique. I can just click and I can start tightening them up a little bit. So like this, like that. I don't know about you, but I find this quite enjoyable, to be honest with you. I also can correct the lengths like this. Now this is ready. Let's go and do the second one. Again, I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to time correct them a tiny bit like this. I can even time the breaths and everything. And this might look like a detailed job, but trust me, it's going to pay off. It's going to make your mixing easier. It's going to make your sound more defined and more assertive. And now we can hear the result. So this is before. Ooh, the game fade away. And this is after. So as you can hear now, the vocal harmonies are so nice and tight, but you might want to have them a little bit looser. It's up to you how you want them to be. And of course, it might be that you have bigger timing problems. So this technique will really help you with that. Of course, when it comes to vocal time correction, you can always use the audio alignment function in Cubase. This is more of an automatic process, but if you want to have total control over your timing, then you can't beat this method. And with the overlaying feature in Cubase, it's a piece of cake. So there you go. This is a foolproof and super effective technique that will allow you to time correct and tighten up any track in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.